In March of 2003, Juliana Wetmore was born without a face. I think there's doctors that were in that delivery room that day. They're surprised she made it her first year. This five-year-old girl has undergone 27 major surgeries. There's no one in the world like Juliana. She's the most extreme case that Dr. Wolf or anyone else has seen. But Juliana has overcome obstacles no one dreamed she could. It's amazing to see where she started and where she's at now. She is learning to talk. Oh, brown. And will soon be starting school. Pretty much everywhere that we go, people stare at her. At some point, she's going to understand the ridicule. But with another landmark surgery just weeks away, it raises many questions. How much can Juliana take? When will enough be enough? And what does the future hold for the girl who was born without a face? Juliana Wetmore lives with her family in Jacksonville, Florida. Her mother, Tammy, is a stay-at-home mom who spends her days looking after five-year-old Juliana and big sister Kendra, now eight. I think that's roosted. <laughs> You're a rooster? <laughs> Kendra is a cow? <laughs> Juliana's a chicken and daddy is a... What's daddy? <laughs> Juliana's dad, Tom, is a flight engineer in the Navy. He is in the middle of a six-month deployment in Europe. While he's away, the close-knit family keeps in daily contact via the internet. Daddy wishes he was there. But you know what? We're almost halfway done. So just a couple more weeks and we'll be past the halfway point. Hey, you know, are you mommy's girl or daddy's street. girl? What? That's right. Are you daddy's beautiful girl? <laughs> daddy's beautiful girl. <laughs> when we last saw Juliana, she was three years old and recovering from one of the most invasive surgeries of her short life. Two years later, she's undergone nothing short of a transformation. Her face has become more functional and she's communicating fluently. My favorite fruit. Fruit. And apples, yes. <laughs> and in just a few weeks, Juliana will be starting kindergarten. Juliana is going into her very first year of elementary school. It's going to be difficult for me to be able to let go a little bit more. She's going to be in school all day long. For the entire Wetmore family, it's been an extraordinary journey, filled with triumphs and setbacks, but one that few could have imagined so many years ago when Tammy found out she was pregnant with her second child. We planned our second pregnancy with Juliana, and we were just elated when we found out that we were pregnant with her. We didn't realize that there was as much wrong with Juliana throughout the pregnancy as it turned out. We knew that there was a few problems. We went to the first ultrasound appointment, and that was the first time where we kind of figured out that somebody was thinking that something wasn't quite right because they asked us to come back again. They noticed that there was a little bit of abnormality with the shape of her head, and they weren't sure yet. It was still real early in the pregnancy. The doctors didn't have any idea of what was going on. All of the ultrasounds that we had, they just kept telling us that she's moving, she's moving. We can't get a good picture of her. So not, not knowing what to expect, it was terrifying for, for months. You know, about four months of not knowing. It's, it's terrifying. On the day of Tammy's delivery, the hospital prepared the neonatal operating room and specialists were put on standby to deal with any emergency. After doctors broke her water, Tammy's labor progressed quickly. Towards the end, we could see the doctor's face and realize, hey, there's something not quite right. They snatched her right out and they went right by to the delivery room. All I saw was this kind of a smooth face. I could tell where her eyes were, but I couldn't tell if they were there, and all I remember seeing was a big old gap. Right away, they started going to battle stations on Tammy. That's when they realized she was hemorrhaging. And unfortunately, when they 
broke her water as the uterine sac kind of ripped away from the walls of her uterus. They had to put me under anesthesia to get all of the bleeding stopped um, before they lost me also. And they finally got to a point to where Tammy was stable for a few minutes and one of the doctors next door poked his head inside and asked if you know I wanted to come next door and I went in and I knew right away she was a fighter because I went to take a picture of her and I did she reached up and she grabbed a hold of her airway and she snatched it out and <laughs> of course you know, she can't breathe at that point so her crash the doctors are going back trying to you know get her airway reestablished so I knew one she was intelligent two she was a fighter <laughs> and she had an attitude and that was what it was going to take for her to survive and I knew that the first time that I actually got to see Juliana and focus on, on her was the day after she was born. I, she still didn't have a diagnosis yet, so we didn't know exactly what we were dealing with. It was very overwhelming, obviously, um, just because of the fact that we didn't know what was coming next. Tammy Wetmore and her husband Tom knew that their unborn baby had complications but nothing could have prepared them for the arrival of their daughter, Juliana. Um, the first time that I actually got to see Juliana and focus on her was the day after she was born. I, she still didn't have a diagnosis yet, so we didn't know exactly what we were dealing with. Juliana was born with treacher Collins syndrome, a hereditary condition which affects the development of the face and occurs one in every 10,000 people. But Juliana's case is the most extreme doctors have ever seen. She was born with a number of severe abnormalities, including a sealed eyelid, no cheekbones, no nasal passage, and almost no upper and lower jawbone. Although Juliana has restricted hearing, she does have good vision from her right eye and a normal functioning brain. She has the mental capabilities of any other child her age. In her short five years of life, Juliana has undergone 27 surgeries as doctors attempt to build her the functional face she was born without. The first two years was touch and go. She was very delicate and it seemed like sometimes it was day by day you know, how far she would go. After such a rough start in life, it is amazing to see how far this courageous and loving little girl has come. Now that she's five and she's healthy and she's strong, um, I definitely feel that I can relax a little bit more. I let her out of my sight now and <laughs> let her do the things that she enjoys doing. This is like utter chaos here. Woo! Since Juliana was just six months old, she has been attending speech therapy. She is already skilled at sign language and is now learning to talk. Hey, Juliana, you ready? Let's go do our talking. When I first met Juliana, she didn't want me to touch her. I could not even get close to her, and she was very aversive to any type of touch or interaction. So she has slowly learned how to trust me and allow me to get in her mouth and around her face. All right, let me see how your jaw's moving today. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and here is your passy mirror valve. <laughs> Kids with a tracheostomy tube breathe in and out through that tube. With the passy mirror valve, we put that on her tracheostomy tube and it acts as a one way valve. So she breathes in through the valve and then it has a diaphragm that closes. So it forces that air up past the vocal cords and into the mouth and the nose areas. Ready, set, blow. Could you see it go up? Okay, let's oh. try to do it through our mouth. This is harder for us. Ready, set, blow. <laughs> okay, ready, set, blow. Yay! Marvelous! Due to all the surgeries she has had, there is a lot of scar tissue on her face. This means Juliana has difficulty moving her facial muscles. With speech production, the tongue is a muscle, so we need good tongue control, which I think Juliana will develop 
very well with practice. Are you ready? First one, boy. Good, here's your next one. Box. Good, push, box. And the last one, yes, a boat. Push it in, boat. And now Juliana is actually talking. She's not really saying consonants and she's hard to understand, um, but she's actually producing words and sentences. The last year she has just improved by leaps and bounds. It's hoped that one day Juliana speaking will catch up with her signing. Read the color. What does that say? Oh. Brown. Very good. Since communication is the one area that could hold Juliana back at school, Tammy realizes the importance of practicing at home. Blue. Very good talking. Juliana is making incredible progress, but she still requires special medical attention. At the end of a long day, Juliana's night nurse, Jean, arrives to take over from Tammy. I've been with Juliana almost every night of her life, and people wonder, why does she have a nurse at night? Well, because she has a trach, and basically a child with a trach is a danger because they can dislodge it, and she has, in fact, at one time pulled it out. Right here, you're going to bed. You, no, you're going to bed. Lay down, you're going to bed. Oh, you're going to have books? Okay. Have some books. She's not going to go to sleep until she does a little bit of busy work here. She likes to multitask. She'll take her books and her dolls and her crayons and everything she can gather up and put it in the bed and turn on the DVD player and lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> when Juliana finally goes to sleep, it gives Jean the opportunity to care for Juliana's eyelids. They don't blink, so she applies ointment to stop them from drying out. Since Juliana sleeps with her eyes open, Jean puts a plastic film over them to make a final protective barrier for the night. She doesn't disturb any of the, the things that we do. The tape that we put on her, she leaves it alone. She doesn't like us putting it there, but once it's there, she'll leave it alone. And then depending on what she's had done, there may be surgical incisions to clean and tend to. You know, we love her so much, and when we have to do things that hurt her, that's hard. Every Sunday, the Wetmore family visit their local church. This is a routine Tammy and the girls keep up in Tom's absence. You're excited? Are you ready? Our church is very important to us. Um, they have a fantastic kids program with a special needs ministry for Juliana. They've been so welcoming to us. We put a buddy with children with disabilities and that enables them to be incorporated into programming for all the other children. We don't isolate them. And with Juliana, it's been rather interesting to watch the other children accept her, overcome some fears of her a little bit so that they can hopefully become adults that accept children um, or accept other adults with disabilities. In one instance, there was a little boy with a behavior problem and he was mean and nasty to everybody else except for Juliana. He treated her like a princess. And it's just amazing what she brings out in the other children that I don't even think they know they have. So they're beginning to, to know that she's part of our children's ministry here and she's just another child. It's so important to talk to your children about the differences in children. There's so many differences in the world today that it, it's really important to talk to your kids about that and to teach them to accept the, the children for the people that they are and not treat them differently because of the way that they look. <laughs> Juliana has had 27 major operations in just five years. And today she's traveling back to Miami Children's Hospital 
to begin the next series of surgical procedures to bring soft tissue from her back to her face. With all of Juliana's special needs, Tammy must make sure she packs for every possibility. I actually have a checklist printed up on the computer that I use to make sure that I have everything that I need for Juliana. We're watching the weather pretty closely. There's a tropical storm that's coming um, to the coast of Florida that's potentially going to be a hurricane by the time it comes ashore. And we're gonna plan to go at this point, but if we can't make it all the way to Miami because of the weather and we have to turn and come home, we're gonna have to reschedule surgery and I don't know how long we'd have to wait for that. <laughs> mm, thanks. With Juliana's dad, Tom, still away, deployed overseas, this will be the first major surgery that Tammy has had to deal with on her own. If you go back to the first time we ever went down to Miami, there was no way in the world that Tammy would ever drive. Probably for the first year or two years that we went down there, she never got behind the wheel once. You ready? I think we're gonna make it, baby girl. We are just starting to get little droplets of rain, so we're starting to come into the storm. This route, I'm expecting to take us between eight and 10 hours. And the fact that we have weather thrown in there is gonna add a little more time, but I have to get Juliana to Miami. 4,000 miles away, Tom anxiously watches the storm's progress. I don't think there's any description of the helplessness of being that far away and watching your wife and daughter traveling through a tropical storm to get down for a surgery. We're approximately halfway down to Miami right now, but um, the storm has stalled in the middle of the state and we're gonna catch the worst side of it. Tammy and Juliana are heading towards the eye of the storm, a potentially dangerous decision. But if she is going to make it to Miami for Juliana's scheduled surgery, they can't turn back now. We're trying to do our best to make it down there so we can have this procedure done. Five-year-old Juliana Wetmore was born without a face. She is now on the way to her 28th surgery. Her mom, Tammy, is driving through the middle of the tropical storm Faye, trying to get Juliana to the hospital in time for her next operation. So far, we have been traveling six hours, and we're still approximately 60 to 70 miles away. If Tammy and Juliana don't make it and have to turn back, Juliana's series of surgeries will be seriously delayed. It seems like we're through the worst of the storm, and I see blue skies ahead, so hopefully it is all behind us. Having made it through the worst of Tropical Storm Faye, Tammy and Juliana stop to take a lunch break. Over the past couple months, she's learned how to suction herself and hook up her own feeding tube. So she's becoming pretty self-sufficient. Can I have a kiss? Oh. What? Can I have a kiss? Oh. <laughs> Do you think you're funny? Oh. No. Mm -hmm. I'm kissing you. <laughs> We have finally arrived in Miami after our long trip down today through the tropical storm, but we are glad that it's over and we are ready to hit the bed for the night. It's a bit of a relief to, to have the drive over, but now I have to prepare myself for tomorrow and the next journey that we have to face. In the morning, Tammy and Juliana arrive at Miami Children's Hospital for Juliana's 28th surgery. Dr. Anthony Wolf, one of the world's leading doctors in the field of craniofacial surgery, has been Juliana's main surgeon since she was only a few weeks old. We're at the point with her now where we can't really do any more bone reconstruction until we have some more soft tissue. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take some tissue from the back of her shoulder and migrated around to provide really skin from beneath her eyelids all the way down to to where her upper lip should be. And we're just waiting for them to take us back into the pre-op area so that they can start 
prepping Juliana, just asking all the questions and stuff. They leave her in her street clothes to go back because she's been 27 times through this, so they don't traumatize her anymore by making her get the gown on or anything. I don't think she quite understands what's happening yet, but she's. Uh, we've talked about it, and she really doesn't want to hear any more about it. <laughs> Since Juliana has had so many surgeries and hospital visits, both she and Tammy know how to entertain themselves in the waiting room. <laughs> Any family, when they have to sign their child into surgery, there's a lot of anxiety and nerves that goes along with it, so we try and help them by answering questions and making their environment as friendly as possible. Did you see the numbers going down? And then it would become zero, then it's done. Hold on. Who's that? Who is it? Where's Miss Piggy? She's, she's my favorite. Dr. Wolf makes a final check on Juliana before she is taken back in for surgery. Okay. See you later, alligator. See you later. Alligator. <laughs> she's been to the OR so many times here and they always wear the same color green scrubs. So if anybody approaches her in those green scrubs, she understands that she, her turn is coming if, if people have green scrubs on. As the operation draws closer, Juliana becomes more and more anxious. Do you want to walk or do you want mommy? After this many surgeries with Juliana, they allow us to carry her back into the OR so that she's comforted as long as possible. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Juliana, it's okay. It's okay, Juliana. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. your arm. I Our ultimate goal is just to get things functioning. We'd like for Juliana to be able to eat properly without a G two. Um, we'd love for her to be able to breathe without the trach. That may happen, that may not happen, we don't know, but if we don't attempt it, we'll never know. <laughs> Knowing that we're taking her in there to put her in pain, that never gets any easier. The first stage in this series of surgeries is the easiest. Dr. Wolf starts on Juliana's shoulder. In two months' time, he'll move a flap of skin from Juliana's back to her face. When he moves the flap, it will expose a large area of open tissue. To cover this wound without having to perform a skin graft surgery, Dr. Wolf inserts a latex expander lower down into Juliana's back. The latex expander has an external port, which Tammy will fill with a small amount of water each day to inflate the expander and stretch the skin. She's gonna be a hunchback of Notre Dame on one side. And then we bring her back, uh, have plenty of tissue to close that area without a skin graft and transfer the tissue to where we need it on the left cheek. It's mommy, baby. This surgery has been a success. But Juliana now faces a painful recovery. And not only does she face a follow-up operation in a few weeks, but Juliana will soon be starting kindergarten. As kids get older, they tend to get more and more rude with one another. And at some point, she's going to understand the ridicule. And that, as a father, is probably where it's going to hurt the most. Juliana Wetmore has had 28 surgeries to build her a face. 
She has recently undergone the first stage in a series of surgeries to make her a cheek. A latex expander has been inserted into Juliana's back and is being filled with water by her mother, Tammy. Back at home, Juliana has recovered well and will be starting school in two weeks. This will be a big step for her as she will join the regular kindergarten class with the other five-year-olds. But for now, Juliana is not worried about the idea of starting school or any of the new challenges this will bring. Juliana is not aware that there's any differences. She's been this way since she was born. And this is the way she's grown up. She's learned how to walk with the vision problem. She's learned how to balance and run and climb, just like other children. From the time she was a baby, she's been held to the mirror. And she's pointed to the mirror, and she knows that's me. And everybody just accepts her, and she just accepts her. She knows that's her. That's Juliana. It's Juliana. Good job! Despite her health issues and multiple surgeries, Juliana has so far managed to keep up with the other five-year-olds. She has already had a special needs education at preschool, but she is just as bright and willing to learn as any other child her age. I am a little bit anxious about it just because it's my baby going to kindergarten. Um, but I think it's, it's great for Juliana. She's really looking forward to it. She has her backpack ready and she's, she's ready to move on and be a big girl now. <laughs> With Juliana's father, Tom, away on a six-month overseas assignment, Tammy takes the girls shopping for school supplies. Juliana and her big sister, Kendra, will be attending the same school and Kendra has her own fears about how Juliana will be accepted. Pretty much everywhere that we go, people stare at her, and I try to Come tell on. them about her. Like, I try to get in front of her so that people aren't, aren't um, staring at her, because she's always getting up close to them, trying to shake their hand, but then they look at her hand, and like, oh, maybe that's poisonous, and then that's they kind of like run to their parents because they're afraid that she's going to attack them or something. She's only five years old, though. I don't think that Juliana is aware right now how children react. She sees some kids cry and be afraid of her, and she has turned around and signed to me like, "Why is you know the baby crying?" Or you know, poor baby. So she really hasn't attached the two, but she will. Go put those away. We do not need markers. Do you like those? Okay. Do you like those? Okay. Put them in. As kids get older, they tend to get more and more rude with one another, and at some point, she's going to understand the ridicule. And that, as a father, is probably where it's going to, going to hurt the most. Juliana. It won't be the first time Juliana has experienced problems making new friends. When she first started ballet class, one of the other little girls was upset by Juliana's appearance. Madeline was a little girl in Juliana's dance class who the first day of dance had some issues with adjusting to Juliana being in there. Um, she actually came out of the class crying during, during the session. I never saw a girl like that. I only saw girls that were like um, me. But over time throughout the dance class, they became buddies. She's one of my bestest friends ever in her life. I never had a real friend like her. <laughs> Once Madeline realized how normal Juliana is, you know, that, that she, it was okay to be her friend, then that's exactly what she did was become her friend. It's early morning in Jacksonville, and Tammy is struggling to get both the girls out the door on time for school. Stand still, please. <laughs> I'll be careful if you stand still. Turn around. You need socks, and we need to brush your hair. And hurry up. Hurry up. We are beginning our mad rush this morning to get out the door to school on time. Juliana, where's your lunchbox? Go get it, please. I pack a lunch for Juliana every morning when I pack Kendra's because she enjoys taking her lunch box just like all the other kids. She can't um, actually take any food by mouth, but she likes to taste everything that everybody else tastes. Oh. 
Cognitively, Juliana is as bright and capable as any other five-year-old. But because of her restricted hearing, she is in the hearing impaired class at school. She's doing extremely well academically. She's starting to read, learning all the same words that other kindergartners are learning at this time. She's reading them and signing them, which is important. Right, it says a cat is in the pot. It's incredible. She's doing actual kindergarten level things. That's a silly place for the cat. And it's difficult for a, a hearing impaired child or a deaf child to learn to read because they learn to read phonetically. But she's doing it and she's doing an, an amazing job. That's your word this week is play. I know you like to play. There's a bit of a struggle at the beginning, just getting her used to the regular routine of things. She wanted to play, which is what any kindergartner wants to do coming in, but then she's gotten right down to it. She's doing absolutely wonderful now, completely on grade level. Juliana's major challenge here at school is communication. Everyone can talk to her, but she has to basically sign to communicate what she wants to tell others. She doesn't let much slow her down, even if she has problems communicating. She just keeps moving forward. When I walk down the hallway with her, I sometimes feel like I'm in a parade because everyone waves at her, and, and if you ask her who's that, she always tells you they're her friend. So according to her, everybody's her friend. Juliana joins her big sister Kendra and the rest of the school in the cafeteria for lunch. The very first time I saw her come in, um, I was just, yay! I have my sister sitting right behind me, so it's really amazing that I get to see her at lunch. Juliana is fed directly into her stomach through a feeding tube, but she enjoys tasting the food and joining in. Okay. Finish, 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 finish. How do you say strawberry? Strawberries? You can just like this. Give me bread. Seven chicks. Seven chicks have mother. For part of the day, Juliana joins the regular kindergarten lesson. The goal is for Juliana to spend more and more time in this class, eventually becoming a full-time member. We did explain to the children um, what, what Juliana is about. We watched a video and we explained to them through the video what her disability is and that she is just like us. Like with the little girls, they love to play dolls just like Juliana likes to play dolls. And all that's different is her face. Juliana, can you come find the letter F? Great job, F and funny. The kids in her classes are fantastic. They just, I don't think that they really see a difference in her. They're kids, they've learned to see through the outside shell and see who she is. School is over and Juliana can now tell Tammy about her day. This is good practice for Juliana to combine sign and voice. Did you go to school today? You did? You wore your backpack? Yes. Did you learn? You did? Did you color? Mm -hmm. Did you write your name? Mm -hmm. You are smart. You worked, yes. You are smart. Where did you go with your class? To music? Yes. You went to music. Did you play a drum? You did? Good job. The next step in the series of surgeries to move skin from Juliana's back to her face is fast approaching. And it's important that she keeps up on her schoolwork while she can, including homework. Can you count the red blocks for me, please? What number do we need to write on the line? Eleven, very nice. Usually we sit down every day after school and do nice homework, both work. of them together. Kendra's pretty much works on her own on it. There are blank children in my class. Are there, do you think there's 20 children, 200 children, or 2,000 children in the class? 20. 
on occasion she'll need help, but Juliana obviously needs one-on-one -on -one attention, so they work. we work out pretty well together. Twelve. Good talking. Ready? Nice job! Tom's overseas assignment will soon be over, but in the meantime he keeps connected to family life through the internet, which means he can help out with his daughter's homework. With Kendra, you can talk to her on the phone, we can communicate, but for Juliana, where everything's visual, as far as understanding with her to be able to visually see and be able for her to communicate through sign language. Good job. <laughs> that's a tremendous comfort on deployment because I could actually have two-way communication with yes. her. Remember, S goes back and forth. Oh, we're on V? Okay, U, V. We gotta do everything in order. W. W, very good, I heard that. Life at home for Juliana is about to be interrupted again. Tomorrow, she will be taken back to the hospital for her next procedure. This will be Juliana's 29th surgery, and the anxiety and fear gets worse every time. I think what happens with kids is they get an increasing panic attack when it comes around to being time to have surgeries. I mean, just the fact of being in the hospital, sometimes they get enormously upset. I know, I know, it's scary, isn't it? <laughs> Juliana is heading back to the hospital for the second stage of her surgery to move soft tissue from her back to her face. Once again, Tammy will be dealing with the upset of surgery on her own, as Tom is still working overseas. Big sister Kendra will be staying behind and will be looked after by her grandmother. But saying goodbye to Tammy and Juliana is not easy. Can you tell Kendra bye-bye? <laughs> Back at Miami Children's Hospital, Juliana is so distressed that Tammy is allowed to carry her into the operating room again. This is a difficult time for both mother and daughter. She had a hard time going under anesthesia just because she doesn't know what to expect. Tammy has slowly filled the tissue expander with water. It has created plenty of extra skin to help Dr. Wolf in the transfer of tissue from Juliana's shoulder to her face. She's been back there about an hour now. Um, I haven't gotten an update from the nurses yet, so I'm still waiting for them to come out. But um, obviously no news is good news. So I'm anticipating another hour at least, possibly two hours, and then I'll get to see her. Dr. Wolf attaches the skin to Juliana's face. In a month, when the skin has good blood supply, he will sever the connection to her shoulder, and Juliana will have a cheek. The operation has taken over four hours, and along with the inherent risks of surgery, there is an added danger that the skin might not receive a good blood supply and could potentially die. She didn't have any cheek to speak of on this side, and her mouth was open, and her tongue kept coming out, and so now she's got some distance between her eye and the corner of her mouth, which is close to normal. The morning after the surgery, Juliana is recovering in the pediatric intensive care unit, where Tammy is waiting for a visit from Dr. Wolf. Such major surgical procedures are shocking to the body, and Juliana's discomfort is obvious. I know, I know, I know. Okay, it's okay. No, just buzz off. We just feel it. I'm not going to hurt you. Juliana did seem to be recovering well, but overnight the blood supply to her new cheek began to fail, 
and the tissue started to die. Juliana was rushed back into surgery in the hope to save it. Due to problems arising from her facial surgery, Juliana was rushed back into the OR to save the dying flap of skin which had been attached to her face. Doctors removed the dead tissue and repositioned the flap of skin closer to Juliana's ear. Dr. Wolf also carried out a skin graft operation to cover the exposed part of her cheek. Even with this unexpected outcome, Juliana is back at home recovering. She did very well coming through that. Her face doesn't look spectacular at this time because it's still recovering from all of that, but um, it'll come in time. Juliana is still recovering from her operation, but today is a big day in the Wetmore household. My dad's been away for six months now. We've all missed him very, very much. I'm coloring the American flag. I can only fit three stars in there, but it does stand for one thing. It stands for there's three people waiting for him to come home. You want to paint some stars? Oh. Where? Don't touch, don't touch. Where do you want the stars? No stars? Oh, just paint. We're going to be heading out pretty soon to pick Tom up from the base from deployment. So the girls have their posters all ready and they're, they're pretty excited and ready, ready to see him. It's hard to describe and the, the excitement you feel every time you come home and every time is different and the funny thing is I don't think you feel the emotions of it until you actually pull up. <laughs> No, no, really getting excited over it until the plane actually touches down. And when you pull it overhead, you see all the um, see all the family sitting there waiting. You see everybody, and you start flashing the lights and letting them know you're there. Then that's when everything starts hitting. And then once you hit the deck, and you realize it's all over. You ready? The following morning, Tom jumps right back into the routine of caring for Juliana. Yep, we're gonna do that. It's kinda nice being back. It's kinda makes you a little bit nervous too, trying to remember where everything's at and get back in into the swing of things here. She's helping me out quite a bit, which is really good. It's difficult when he comes home from deployment just readjusting. The girls and I get so used to doing things on our own and it's difficult for everybody to kind of find their place once again. Yep, so let's get a shirt on. Juliana has now had 29 operations in just five years, and every procedure brings anxiety and the pain of recovery. Now that Juliana has started school, she cannot afford to miss classes and fall behind. The question is whether to pursue more surgeries, which may help to give her a more functional face, or allow Juliana to concentrate on her schooling and live with her disabilities. Going through this last several procedures, I was kind of getting to the point that I, I just wanted to say I'm done. She's been through enough, she's dealt with enough, we're finished. But I don't want to let her down also. You weigh that against waiting until she can make her own decisions and it may be too late to do some of the surgeries and procedures that need to happen because she is so young and can regenerate skin and can regenerate bone and, and do the things that once you get into an older state you don't do as well. And also weigh out the fact of letting her be a five-year-old kid. Yeah. You know, letting her go to school and letting her go back to dance and letting her do the things that five-year-old kids do. She's so confident in who she is. So how far does she want us to go? Starting at age five or six, she can have an input into to what's done. And if she says, no, I don't want anything done this summer, and, and uh, that's okay. We're here for her. 
our goal with Juliana is for her to be self-sufficient, independent, and a responsible adult. As far as the future goes, we expect the same out of her academically that we expect out of Kendra because we know that she can do it. You know, we expect her to do her best and we know how smart she is and we expect her to, to work to the best of her ability. What number do we need to write on the line? Hmm. Hmm. Eleven. Very nice. I think she's also, as, as you've probably seen, extraordinarily bright and very energetic and has a very definite personality of her own. She seeks information, she seeks knowledge, and she's going to perform right up there One, two, in society. You know, communication is her the only thing that holds her back from things. So if she has the ability to communicate, then she doesn't have any barriers anymore. Say go Rockers! Juliana's story is ongoing and is going to continue to develop. You know, this is a story of who she is now. Tomorrow the story continues. Mm -hmm.